Hey, it's Randy from UC Status. Today I'm going to show you a new feature I'm really excited about. It's casting from the Teams desktop client to a nearby Microsoft Teams room. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you'll note that I showed you this feature already from a mobile phone. Uh, it's no different, really, but this time it's from the Teams desktop client. When I posted that video some time ago, that was the number one question I got. When can I do this from the Teams desktop client? Well, Microsoft has finally delivered. It should be rolling out now to your client, so just keep an eye out for it. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So for this setup, over here, I've got a Teams desktop client. Uh, you can see I'm signed in as Alex Wilbur. Uh, Alex W at M365 X706 4907 on Microsoft.com. This is actually just a demo tenant that, uh, that I've got fired up here just to show you. Over here, I've actually got a Microsoft Teams room that's in my environment, that's in my ucstatus.com uh, M365 tenant. So if you do want to cast to this nearby room, what you need to do is hit the three dots and press cast. And what that's do doing is bringing up a Bluetooth beacon to try and find a nearby room. It's searching and trying to find it. And oh, wait a minute, what's happening here? It's not finding a nearby room. Right, didn't find any nearby rooms. Now, before you say, oh, I messed up the video, but that is expected. Alex Wilbur is signed into an external tenant a different tenant to the rooms themselves at the partner organization that he's visiting. So he wouldn't necessarily know the address of this room here. So in order to cast to this nearby room, what you need to do is the following. So go to chat, start up a new chat, then ask your uh, partner organization that you're visiting what the email address is for this room. So in my case, it's dagaba at ucstatus.com. So what that's gonna do is start a search so this search basically starts up a search. It's, it's saying, now start the search for Dagobah at ucstatus.com externally, externally from your tenant. So all I need to do now is tap on that. It starts that search and it loads. Basically what my tenant is doing is searching M365 to try and find this contact in an external tenant and actually bringing up the full name of it. So in this case, it's Dago MTR. That's the full uh, name that I've, uh, I've actually assigned the room. So you can be sure that it, if it has external in there, that it's actually found that contact. So what it's done now is it's actually cached this contact in memory. It's not something you would necessarily think to do, but this is a necessary step. Now, once I've cached this in memory, casting from an external client and an internal client is exactly the same. So just to show you, I'm just going to hit and go back out of chat. I don't have to start a chat. I don't have to save a chat. I don't have to add the contact. What it's done is it, it's cached that contact in the background in the Teams desktop client. Now, to cast your screen, it's exactly the same whether you're an external contact or an internal contact at this point. Hit the three dots, press cast. It should search for a nearby room via Bluetooth beaconing. You press next. At this point, you've got your full share tray. You could decide whether you want to share your screen or a window, PowerPoint Live, recent files, whatever else that you want. So this is your share tray. Whatever is in your share tray is up for grabs. So now I'm just going to press screen. I'm going to press cast. So what's happening in the background is actually it is starting a meeting, actually sending a meeting invite to this nearby room. So I'm just gonna press accept. And there you have it. So it's just started a meeting with this nearby room. And at this point, it is just a meeting where I happen to be sharing my screen. So my screen over here, and there it is on the front of room display. Now you can see I've got video going. I can turn that off if it's not needed. But at this point, as I said, it's just a meeting. If I wanted to add somebody from my own client or my own tenant here, I can just press and search for Grady or what have you. And then I can request to join. On um, this side, if I wanted to invite somebody from the organization that I'm visiting, then I can initiate a search here and find somebody in the directory for this team's tenant. 
again, it's just a meeting. And if I want to stop casting, so this is another question I get quite often. If I just press leave, again, that's bad etiquette and Teams meetings in general anyway. If I just press leave, all I'm doing is leaving the meeting as Alex Wilbur, but it's leaving it going on the Teams room nearby. So what I need to do, just like any Teams meeting that I want to end, is I hit the drop down list and I press end meeting. Are you sure? Yes. And that ends the meeting. I'm just going to give it five stars, both sides. Someone is thanking me for the feedback. And now the room goes back to idle. I've got my Teams desktop client again, and that's it. Now, if you want to add another nearby room, it's the same process. Just go into a chat or start a chat, uh, type in the email address for the room that you're in, start that search so it can cache that contact. Then from now until the end of time, every time you visit that client site, partner site, whatever they happen to be to you, if you end up in that room, you can search, find that nearby room and cast the room at your heart's content. So I think you'll agree this is a great feature. It's a good alternative to plugging in the old HDMI cable, USB-C cable, um, dongles, you know, all that kind of thing. Basically, it's built into the Teams desktop client. It works whether you work for the organization or whether you don't. As long as everybody's got Bluetooth on, everybody is going to be happy. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.